Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at this Ekai LPD-8 laptop pad controller. So if you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So I'm going to be doing something a little different with this. I'll be using this to control Final Cut Pro. So traditionally this would be used as a, say like a drum pad or for music or things like that. But I'll be using software called Command Post to map these buttons to different tasks in Final Cut. So I currently have a similar pad like this that I use, but I would like something smaller. So I came across this one. So we have these eight sort of drum pads and it looks like we have like eight dials here and I don't know if we can do things here But uh, let's get this unboxed first Okay, so here's the device Okay, so here it is we have program note program change and CC I'm not sure what all of these things do but then here we have the pads so they're rubberized and typically you might tap out a tune on these I'm not musically inclined so I'm not sure how you do that and then we have these knobs here they're labeled K1 through K8. On the bottom, we have rubber feet. And we have a USB-B port. So if I place this on my bench here, this has pretty good grip. It doesn't seem like it's going to slide around a lot. Now, if you're tapping away on this, you really don't want this bouncing around or moving. This does come with a USB cord. So we're used to USB cords that would fit on a phone being like micro USB or USB type C. This is similar to a cable you might see on a computer printer. So the cord is around 40 inches. Let's measure this. This is right about 12 inches by three and an eighth by three quarter. Although the knobs are gonna stick up a little more and that's maybe one and three eighths or so. So the cord's going to come out the left side here. And I will go ahead and throw a keyboard on here. This is just kind of a standard keyboard. And you can see what this looks like in comparison to a keyboard. So it gives you kind of a visual idea of what size this is. So let me see here. I think what I'll do is I'll leave this here. I'll plug this in in the left side of the screen into my MacBook. And then I'll switch over to my MacBook screen and I'll go over setting this up. So on this MacBook, I have Final Cut Pro installed. So let's say I want to set up the second button to speed up the video four times speed. So I'll go in here somewhere and I will cut the video here and have a clip selected. So I've downloaded the command post software. I'll go to that. So this is my first time running it on this computer. It says it would like to control the computer using accessibility features. I'll open the system preferences. It kind of took me away from there, so I'll go back into it. I'll click the lock in the bottom left. I'll type in my password. I'll tap on command post. So this is giving command post access to your computer. If you don't feel comfortable with this, the software may not be for you. So I'll close this now, I'll close my notification. And here it says Command Post makes use of the built-in macOS accessibility frameworks to control other applications such as Final Cut Pro. So I'll say Allow Accessibility. So that does not seem to be working here. I'm going to quit it and I'll open it back up. It may have needed to be restarted after I changed that permission. So let's hit continue here. We'll hit allow screen recording. Again, I'll go in and do the lock on the bottom. I'll select the app and it says quit and reopen. So I'll do that. So as you can see, there's a lot of back and forth here with permissions when you're setting this up. Let's see how far we get this time. So this is about enabling shortcuts. So you could use this control pad to set up other shortcuts that are outside of Final Cut. I'm not going to do that right now, so I'll just say disable shortcuts. And here it wants to scan Final Cut Pro, so I'll say start scan. It says it's set up and ready to go, so I'll hit close. So I don't know if I need to close Final Cut, but I'm going to anyway, and I'll open it back up. So now if we go to the menu at the top, we can see this one, it's near the middle of my screen. If I tap on it, this is the command post menu. I'll go down to control surfaces and then MIDI. So I'll tap enable MIDI support. I'll go to application, I'll say Final Cut Pro. I'll say action select, and this will say search console, and I'll say retime, and I'll look down here, it says retime fast 4X. So I'll tap that. So we set up the action of speeding up the video. Then on the very right here, we'll hit learn and I'll tap the pad. So here you can say it says type note on, note is 40, channel is 10, value is 114. So when I tap that pad, I hit that with a force of 114 according to the system. If I hit it another time, it might be 110, 
it goes from 0 to 127. So I want to tap on this. So I want to delete that until it says value none. That way it will trigger with any force applied to that pad. Now there may be applications where you actually want to read that value and use it, but for what we're doing, we don't need to do that. So I'll actually go to the next one here. I'll say select, I'll say retime to normal. I'll go to learn and I'll hit the first pad there. Again, I'll remove the value. I'll go to the third one. I'll say select, retime to 8x, learn. I'll hit the third button, same thing. And I'll go to the last one. I'll say retime to 20x, if I can find it. I think that's it. Okay, so now that I have these set up, I'll close this and let's try it out and see if it works yet. So I'll go in here, I'll select my video, I'll tap the second pad. Okay, that is not working yet. Okay, so I had to tweak a couple of these where it says ignore application, I unchecked that. So instead of retime fast 4x, I use menu modify retime 4x. So if you type in 4x, it will come up here. And then the normal one has to be normal 100%. So I have that. I'll go back into Final Cut. I'll select it. And now if I tap the first pad, it'll make it normal speed. Second one will make it 400%. Third one will make it 800. Fourth one will make it 20x speed. So now we can set it back to normal. So as you're editing, if there's something you use a lot, you can select your clip, tap a button, and it will apply it. So let's go do another one now. So I'm going back to the menu, control surfaces, MIDI. I'll go to the next one, I'll say select. I'll type in lower third. Do basic lower third. I'll hit learn on the right, and I'll hit this pad below. I'll change the value to zero, close this. I'll go to the beginning of my clip, I'll tap that bottom pad, and here we have a lower third in. Now we also have these knobs here, we can use those. So I'll go back in, I'll say select, but now in the search I'll type MIDI, and these are the different options you can control with the knob. So I'll scroll through these. You can see there's lots of color wheels on here, so you could use those knobs to adjust the contrast, brightness, saturation, things like that. I'll scroll through those. So I'm going to use Timeline Zoom, I'll tap that. I'll tap Learn, and I'll turn this knob here. So now I'll go over to Final Cut, and when I turn this knob, you can see it adjusts the timeline. So when it's all the way to the right, the timeline will be expanded completely. When it's to the left, it will be shrunk down. Now this is a 2015 MacBook Pro. This seems a little slower than my M1 Mac that I normally do my video editing on. And that's the computer I'll be using this on permanently. And I had been closing this down each time. You really don't need to. So I'll go back in here to select, I'll go to MIDI. And the other one I do typically is the horizontal timeline scroll. So learn that one, I will do the control under. So I will zoom the timeline out and then I can use the bottom here to go back and forth. So to the left, I'm at the beginning. If I turn it to the right, it takes me to the end. And then if I turn it a little bit, it takes me to the middle. So those are some basic features of this. You could set this up for different effects. So if you already have a MIDI controller, you could plug it in. That could be just like a keyboard even, and you could press a key on the keyboard and it would do something. And then if that works well for you, you could maybe change to a pad like this or even a bigger one if you want more controls. You could potentially put labels on here. This is rubber, but you could maybe get a label that would stick to it but it would probably wear off if it's not waterproof or something. Now here's the potential bad thing, and I'll do a test now with this. So I will scroll to the beginning, and I have the first section that I sped up. So I found when the computer goes to sleep, it loses connection with my current MIDI pad. So I'll see if it does this with this one. So I'm gonna stop my screen recording. I'll try and get all of this in frame here. I'll sleep my computer. I'll wake it back up. Let's see if this works now. Okay, that seems to work. So it might be my other MIDI controller. I'll test this and I'll put a note up on the screen if this has trouble with sleeping, like my other one. Now, if this can keep working without disconnecting every time it goes to sleep, that's going to be a big advantage of this one over my previous one. So as I shut the light off, I also noticed that these pads are backlit with some red. So this is just really a quick sampling of what you can do with a control surface like this, this command post software, and software like Final Cut. But that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.